Hey, welcome to the world of vintage guitars. This is a Gibson ES335, 1958, which is kind of the first year that the 335 is using the PAF humbucker pickups. Just like on the Les Paul, they put in humbuckers in 57 and 58. And this is yeah, most of the humbuckers 335s from the beginning, from the early years is 58. So this is the perfect example of a uh, killer um, 335. Um, has a strong C neck, you know, this is um, a bigger kind of neck. I personally own a 60s uh, 335, which has a slightly slimmer neck, but this is the chunky 50s neck which some people consider the real deal. Well, it is the, the real deal. Um, this one has also the dot markers. It's called the dot markers because it's pearl dots inlays here. In the 60s, they have, you know, the, the square ones. And, you know, dot markers are the most sought after 335s. Um, the good thing about such a guitar is, uh, from my own experience, I know, it worked so well in the studio. When I was a session guy, I used my Strat a lot because that's my main guitar. But number one, guitar, uh, number two guitar was the 335. Why? Because it worked every time. If I needed a, a solid guitar that still has some air, that still gets some breathe and um, is not as thick as a Les Paul, a 335 is the perfect instrument for that. So I was laying down many tracks with a 335 and it always worked, it always was perfect in the mix and uh, had lots of character and yeah, not too bright, not too dull, not too whatever. It's just one of those guitars that always work. Okay, let's check out some of the specialties um, on the 335, let's start with a pickup comparison. Everything on eight, and mind, we have again real PAF pickups, which is a class of its own. <laughs> So see how much the tone knob does for the guitar tone. It's like a nice and clean, transparent sound on the bridge pickup versus something that screams. And then there's more on tap on the volume control. Yeah, so this bridge pickup is really powerful, giving you already a tonal range of, yeah, smooth and rich cleans and some bites that are killer for overdrive. I mean, why did people like Elvin Lee play that guitar? Because it had some character, blues, and the bite. And uh, Chuck Berry was using the 335. Nowadays, we have guys like Dave Grohl using it. Um, B.B. King, before he was playing his kind of signature stuff, he was using this kind of guitars. And of course, uh, Larry Carlton. Yeah, let's check out the middle position. Everything on eight, 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 eight here. <laughs>
Yeah, that's the nice and smooth sound. Let's crank all the knobs and see how the middle position sounds with everything on full. <laughs> Impressive. This is the in-between sound. Now we go for the neck pickup. Everything on eight and we have... Nice transparent neck pickup. Smooth, nice for, you know, rhythm guitars and jazz. This is uh, the neck pickup. I was using it on eight at the beginning and then increased to 10 and still there is some on tap on the tone here. Yeah, 
You can imagine why people like Larry Carlton love that kind of guitar. A, um, yeah, they are so versatile and they have this kind of character, nice woodiness, clarity, they sing, they're not too heavy, and you can use them for almost anything. So let's check out how this thing sounds on a Marshall, if it's a rocker. <laughs> Yeah, the 335 is also great for rock. And I have some hot driven clean here, clean with a boost for blues. <laughs>
you see the picture why this guitar is great for blues, rock, fusion, everything. And maybe some high gain as well, so we have a, um, yeah, even more oh. colors from this. PF loaded 335. Yeah, and even my hero Richie Blackmore used to play a 335 in his early years. Maybe you remember this one. <laughs> This original 1958 dot marker ES-335 is the perfect example of a Gibson 335 with great tone and great playability. Cheers. Mm -hmm.